Hello there. My name is Ross and I work in the Royal Kitchens here at Hampton Court. When you come into these kitchens, you are greeted by a view of a room that has changed little over the last 500 years. It dates back to Wolsey's time and when Henry VIII took over this great palace here, they actually increased the size of the kitchen to accommodate the extra number of guests he was going to have in his great hall. My job is a simple one. I have to prepare the meat. Enough meat for perhaps 600 guests to dine twice a day up in the Great Hall on two huge meals. One at dinner at 10 o'clock in the morning and the other one at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Down here in Wolsey's great roasting kitchen, this is where a lot of the work is done. Here, literally tons of meat is brought in every day and it's prepared and then jointed, put onto spits and roasted in front of one of these huge fires that we have here around the walls. There's around six of these large fireplaces in the walls around here and they're all capable of burning a lot of fuel. We think somewhere between about six and eight tonnes of seasoned dry oak every day was burnt in these fireplaces. Today, I'm cooking chickens. Chicken nowadays is quite a simple meal. It's a very cheap product. 500 years ago, chicken was worth a lot of money. A chicken that might go on to produce more eggs or more chickens would be cut and killed and you'd end up with roasting chickens out on these fireplaces maybe several dozen at a time. The way I'm turning the spit at the moment is I'm turning it so that the hottest part of the meat ends up at the top of the spit. And slowly I turn it and the basting fats roll around the meat, keeping it moist, keeping it tender, and that's one of the secrets of roasting. The real secret of roasting meat is you cook it in front of a big open fireplace like this one here, you turn it very slowly, and as the, the meat faces the fire, the juices are mobilized and melted and drawn out towards the outer side of the meat. Here, they sizzle a little bit and then the meat turns around away from the fire and you end up with it being cooled. Cooled nearly as much as it's been heated on the one side by the fire. There's a terrific draft of air comes screaming in into the fireplaces and goes up the chimney. That cools the meat down by quite a few degrees and that causes the juices to uh, draw back in again, to contract and you end up with the fat and the flavour staying within the meat and not dripping off into the drip tray on the floor. Today we've been cooking a lot of food. We're beginning to be showing you how they would have made the food suitable for a royal court 500 years ago. We cannot show you the sort of scale that was involved. We can sim simply show you the processes involved and uh, try and give you an idea of how it may have looked and how it may have seen at the time. Henry VIII used his food as a political weapon to both intimidate and to impress his guests. My job here is quite a simple one. I simply have to turn the meat and make sure it doesn't burn. Also make sure it stays tender and juicy enough. Now if we're roasting a thick flank of meat, we may take three or four hours to roast that food. If we're doing chickens, we may take one hour. If we're in a rush, we can do them in 20 minutes. We've done them from start to finish in 20 minutes, but they're more like you've baked them in, the, in an oven. They're not so tender, they're not so juicy, not so flavoursome. But we, by taking more time and a lot of care about the food, we're able to make the food taste that much better.